The 21st century has brought major challenges to both science and diplomacy. By understanding these paradigm shifts, we can see why diplomacy and science must be better integrated to face both scientific and diplomatic challenges. First of all, let's talk about the ways that diplomacy is changing. Diplomacy is no longer monopolized by states. We're beginning to see more and more of a blur between diplomacy that involves state actors, such as foreign ministries, and non-state actors, such as NGOs, companies, and even individuals. For the first time in human history, private companies can engage more people than any given nation. Facebook, for instance, has nearly as many users worldwide as the entire population of China. And that number continues to grow. Google processes more than 40,000 search queries per second from around the world. That's 3.5 billion searches every day, just under half the world's population. Today's companies are globalized at a scale that we've never seen before. This makes them important actors on the diplomatic stage as well as on the corporate stage. And most of the largest and most influential companies are technology driven. In the past, personal travel was also less common. Travel was expensive and extremely time consuming. For hundreds of years, the journey from London to New York took two to three months. But these days, it's not just diplomats you know, or the wealthy who get to travel internationally. Everyone does. The high rate of mobility and connectivity means that any citizen can be a cultural ambassador and transmit knowledge. Now, most people can form relationships and collaborations across borders without needing any government endorsement. Even more characteristic of the 21st century, individuals and companies are even doing things that previously only governments could do. Take Bitcoin, for instance. It's a virtual currency. It's based on technological innovation that manages to have value entirely outside of any government structure. Corporations, individuals, and advances in technology are transforming diplomacy. However, diplomacy isn't the only thing that's changing in the 21st century. Science is changing too. 21st century scientific research is even more globalized. Major scientific endeavors in physics, medicine, or space require funding, infrastructure, and international engagement. Often, only governments have the resources to support large-scale scientific facilities. In more and more cases, it's not feasible for most countries to expand resources and take risks to build their own. The International Space Station, for example, costs $150 billion to build, and it's operated by 16 countries. Participation in a project like this is a way for countries to build influence and confidence on the global stage. Science also relies on international cooperation for geographical reasons. In many cases, research specimens are found only in very specific places on the planet. And often, even multilaterally funded facilities can't be located just anywhere. Take telescopes, for example. They provide insight into star birth and some of the oldest objects of our universe. But they must be located in very specific places. They must be high and dry above much of the Earth's atmosphere, which distorts light, and in an area with very little cloud coverage. So what's the perfect spot? One of them is the Atacama Desert of Chile. It's over 5,000 meters above sea level. That's 16,500 feet. It's also the driest place in the world. Data suggests that it didn't receive rain for over 400 years. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, cost $1.3 billion to build, with funding from Europe, North America, and Asia, as well as Chile. Without diplomatic and transnational agreements, building ALMA and many other astronomical observatories would be impossible. We will have no way of investigating fundamental questions about the universe. Today, astronomers from all over the world can use the ALMA telescopes. Because they are government funded, they must be available for public use. But because they are collaborative, that public use is not limited to the local area. Astronomers and scientists all over the world can benefit.
Individual scientists also cooperate internationally to further their science and their careers. Many eventually emigrate to nations with strong science and technology sectors, such as the United States. In 2011, 38% of scientists working in the U.S. were born overseas. Finally, these days, in order to participate in science, you don't even have to be a trained scientist. We're seeing more and more citizen science. What is that? That's when ordinary citizens can contribute to major scientific projects. For example, you can take an environmental survey, or you can allow your personal computer to search for extraterrestrial intelligence while you're sleeping. You can even help scientists map neurological connections while playing a video game. Finally, more and more countries around the world are investing in science and technology, from Southeast Asia to Sub-Saharan Africa, as a means to economic development and prosperity. Both diplomacy and science are changing in the 21st century, making science diplomacy more and more important. In addition, the increase in mobility and connectivity spreads both solutions and problems. On the one hand, Connectivity allows us to transmit information like storm warnings and scientific data faster than ever before. Mobility also improves science. Did you know that Charles Darwin traveled for four years on the HMS Beagle in order to collect his specimens? Compare that to today, when you can make the same journey in a matter of days, and you can refrigerate your samples. All of this means that we're able to do more science much faster. On the other hand, mobility and connectivity also pose new challenges. We see this with epidemics such as the Ebola or Zika viruses. Plane travel results in the virus spreading extremely quickly into populations all around the world. Things that may have been confined locally or nationally now are spread regionally or globally at a faster rate, for better and for worse. There are many reasons that science diplomacy is gaining traction today, but as we've seen, these three are the most crucial. One, diplomacy is increasingly influenced, sometimes even driven, by non-state actors. Two, science is more global than ever. And three, mobility and connectivity accelerate solutions, yet also lead to new challenges. We've talked a lot so far about why science diplomacy is so important and provided some historical examples. How do we better understand the complex ways that science and diplomacy interact for us to make use of it. 